So we were, many of you know we have a Focus Forward team. Some of you may not. Uh, this is a small team of people who have been meeting for months now. Uh, many of you participated in a survey that we did and gave us some feedback, and it was very valuable feedback, so thank you for those of you who participated. If we followed up that with some uh, conscious conversations where we got groups of people together and got some feedback from you uh, in, those, in that setting, thank you for that. And last Tuesday, we had a meeting of that team. And some of the things that were, have been discussed and some of the things that are coming out uh, were, were discussed in that meeting. And one of the things I found fascinating and also a little bit disturbing, um, one of the things that have been discussed in that, and it is that are we clear about what unity is about in that are we just about our own experience? Are we just about connecting with that light that we are within us, having our own experience of that? Are we focused within and not focused outside? And there seems to be a little, not enough clarity around that. And so I want to address that a little bit from my perspective today. Because I think it is important for us to know who we are, what we are about. Uh, I think a lot of times, and it has probably been part of the unity's culture, to be more inner focused, to focus on our own experience, our own enlightenment, our own growth, our own awakening, however you want to say that. So I want to talk about that a little bit. And um, we believe in unity. We teach, and I have to take this off again, I'm sorry. Um, we teach that um, we are all light. We are all expressions of the one light, the great light, the source. And that we are expressions of that, and in unity speak we often call that the Christ, the Christ light. We understand the Christ to be that light, that first light. In the beginning, God created, God said, let there be light, and there was light, so light was the first creation. Light is the foundation of all that is. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning, if you translate that differently, in the beginning was the Christ, and everything came into being through the Christ. Everything came into being through the Word. There are many ways that we can interpret that and understand that. So we believe that we came into being. We as human beings come into being as the Christ, as the light. And we have the opportunity to evolve our consciousness so that we know that, that we can awaken to that truth consciously. And live that truth. We believe in unity that Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua, as we talk about Yeshua from the Aramaic, how, again, it's the teacher, it's a, a master, one who uh, understood the truth, one who taught the truth, and more than that, one who lived the truth. And so we in unity believe that Jesus is a great teacher. Not the only one. We certainly don't believe Jesus was the only Christ. We are all Christs and have the potential to understand that and to live that. But we believe that Jesus, in unity, we believe Jesus was a great teacher. And what we say in unity quite often is that we don't, we don't worship Jesus as some in traditional Christianity do. We follow Jesus. We follow his teaching, and we follow his, his path. He never said, worship me. He said, follow me. Do as I do. And so that's the way we choose to understand our relationship with Christianity in unity. And there's not, I mean, that's a very, you know, simple understanding of that. So as I thought about that in relationship to that question, is unity just about 
our own awakening, our own personal experience. And once we are awakened, we go sit on a mountaintop somewhere and just bliss out all the time. Is that what we're to do? Well, if we use Jesus as our example, is that what Jesus did? I don't think so. I don't think so. And so I went to the Scripture, which I don't always do. (laughs) You know me well enough. And Jesus taught. I love, I really love getting into some of those teachings a little bit differently now because Jesus taught on so many different levels. He was teaching people on different levels, on the very literal level for people who could understand on the literal level. He was teaching on a metaphysical level, metaphorical. Everything that he was teaching could be understood and taken at very different levels. And so as I looked at the scripture where he talks about being the light of the world, he says, you are the light of the world. When you light, when your lamp is lit... You don't hide it under a bushel. You let your light shine before others so that your Father in heaven may be glorified. Now, our understanding of the Father in heaven really is just as I was just saying. It is the source light, the one light, as Jesus called it, the Father, the source, so that that light might be awakened in others. But I I think Jesus was teaching on many levels. He was teaching in that short verse very literally. Because in Jesus' time, people lived communally. They had rooms within one structure. And if somebody had oil to light their lamp, they were to light the lamp and allow that light to be shared by everyone else in the space. Now, if there was tension in the space, which I can't imagine that ever happening (laughs) between people, especially people of faith, um, they might resent that and somebody might say, well, I'm not sharing my light with you. And so they might hide it under a bushel or under a basket so that the other people in the space don't benefit from that. So I think Jesus was saying, okay, people, let's love each other. Let's share with each other. Let's give from our good to each other. If someone can't afford oil to light their lamp, then share yours with them. I think he was teaching us all to share, to give. And many of you this week, example that, and, and many other ways, but I'm just noticing those of you who participated in Family Promise, this week were present to share. Share your love, share your, your good, share the food, share the space. You were there to really give and to share with those who might not have at this time in their lives. And so the very literal teaching of Jesus He was also, I believe, teaching on a more metaphorical level. Teaching us that, yes, you are the light of the world. The world, in that that understanding, being this dimension. This third dimensional experience that we share. And he was saying, you are the light. You are the truth. You are the light of the divine. You are that which comes forth into the world to be that light in the world. So light in that way might be truth, might be wisdom, an illumined consciousness. So you're saying bring that to others. Bring that to others who may not yet have that. Bring that to other people. Teach. But first of all, we have to know that we are the light. We have to know that we too are that. We have to develop an awareness of who we are. You are the light of the world. <clears throat> and I think it's important for us to look at how, what does that mean for us? What does that mean? 
How do we be the light of the world? And Linda Martella Whitsett, uh, Reverend Linda Martella Whitsett, who is now the Vice President of Silent Unity at Unity Village, wrote a book called Divine Audacity, Dare to Be the Light of the World. Dare to be the light of the world. And I love that idea, dare. And I was thinking, dare, you know, I love acronyms. So I was thinking about what would dare be? I think, the, I think about that and I think D, D would be develop the conscious awareness of the light. You are the light. How do we do that? We do that through prayer and contemplation and meditation and study. And you know, Eugene is teaching a class on living the five steps of prayer. And I was in that class yesterday. And that's what he talked about was developing a consciousness of that, setting an intention to know that, to, to, to know it consciously. And, you know, I was thinking about it this morning. I was thinking about we can use affirmations. I know some people have been in New Thought for a long time think, oh, I've done that. You know, I've done the affirmation thing. Oh, I'm tired of that stuff. That's old news. And, I, you know, I have to say that I've been there too. But when we think about affirmations, it's not about making something true. It's about stating a truth that conditions our subconscious in a way that we begin to really get it. And so I would say walk around every day saying, I'm the light of the world. <laughs> walk around, put it on your mirror, put it somewhere. You know, remind yourself, I am the light of the world. I am the Christ awakening unto itself in the world. I am the Christ of God. I am the Christ living itself right here and right now. Whatever works for you that really conditions your subconscious to believe it, to know it, to develop a consciousness. And then A would be, for me, would be acknowledge, to, uh, to accept, to admit, and to acknowledge. Yes, I am that. I can admit that. I don't I can re- go over the resistance. How many of you, when you say, I am the Christ of God, living itself right here and right now, can really believe that? Can really accept that? Can even say that out loud? I've been using this affirmation, I I am the mind of God. I am the mind of Christ. I am the body of Christ. How many people have a reaction to that? But when you say it, when you embody it, when you really uh, allow yourself to admit it, just allow the resistance to come up. Love the resistance. Be with the resistance. I am the Christ expressing right here and right now in this moment i am the embodiment of christ can we really say that own that acknowledge that for ourselves i say yes (laughs) we can r would be to realize the truth it's one thing to know the truth intellectually it's one thing to affirm it it's one thing to believe it But when we take it into our spirit, when we have the feeling of knowing the truth, believing it is one thing, but knowing it, grounding it, feeling it, being it, knowing that you are it. Again, through practice, through contemplating, through being with it, through going within, asking it to be revealed to you, in a very powerful and real way that you can grasp and understand. And then the E would be to to embody it. And what I mean by embodying it is to be it. To embody it, once you develop the consciousness of it, once you acknowledge it, become aware of it, admit it, once you realize it, it becomes part of who you know yourself to be, You embody it through your actions, through your words, that we take the light, as Jesus said, to others. Let your light shine. And he did say, through your works, so that your Father in heaven might be glorified. The awareness of that true light, the one light, might be expanded in the consciousness of everyone that you come in contact with. 
And that means going to people and being the Christ for them. Like that reading said, when they're hurting, to comfort them. When they need to be healed of something emotionally, mentally, physically, to be the presence in for them wherever they are. To take that light out into the world, not just to have it here. It's great for us to awaken to that Christ light, to know who we are. And to claim it for ourselves and to to be in relationship with each other in our classes, in our groups, in our workshops and say, oh, I see the Christ in you. I behold the Christ in you. And it's beautiful and it's wonderful and it's important for us to do that. But in addition to that, we get to then take it out into the world and be the Christ for other people, to be the light I was thinking about that this week. I was thinking there's a saying. I don't remember who it came from. But I was reminded of the saying that says, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I think that speaks volumes for us. We get to be the example of the ones who embody the Christ following the example of Jesus and others who went out to heal the sick, to visit those in prison, to feed the hungry. Um, And I think that's what we have the opportunity to do. And I think what can get in the way of that, we talked about this in class yesterday, somebody did, what can get in the way of that is thinking so, thinking that I'm not that. I'm not that. Who am I to think I can do that? Who am I to go out into the world and be the Christ? Who am I to go out into the world and share healing energy and, and words and thoughts and prayers with other people? Who am I to think that I can go out into the world and meet the needs of a hurting world? Who are you? You are the Christ. You're here to embody the Christ. And I think that is what we are here to do. I know that is what we are here to do. And there's one other level of that teaching that that came to me this week as I was contemplating it. Um, And we have to understand who Jesus was. Jesus was a Jew in Roman-occupied territory. Jesus was an enlightened being. Jesus was an iconoclast. Jesus was an insurrectionist. Jesus spoke out against the power structures in the church. Jesus spoke out against things that were not in alignment with love and truth. You remember he went into the temple and overturned the table because of the money changers, because of the, how they had commercialized uh, worship and ritual in the temple. And so we understand who Jesus was. So I think also he said he was speaking to those who were willing and able to hear at a different level to say, bring the light to the world. Now, I love Richard Rohr. Many ways I love Richard Rohr. But one of the things he says in one of his books struck me. He says that when it's often when we see the word world in Scripture, it's actually referring to the systems, the systems of the world. Those systems can be family systems. Those systems can be church systems. Those systems can be governmental systems. Those systems can be criminal justice systems. Those systems can be our educational systems. That's the world, I believe. One aspect of the world that Jesus was talking about. And I believe he was saying to his followers, be the light, bring the truth, 
Bring love to the world, the systems that humanity has created. And we can begin right here in our personal relationships, our family systems, and our church system. And how do we do that? What's the, how does that work for us? Well, I want to go back to the prophet Micah, who said, what does, when, what does the Lord require of you? Now, again, let me rephrase the word Lord, because I know that can trigger some people. Lord, in our understanding, is the self-existent one. The self-existent I am. The Lord God of your being. What does the Christ, the Lord, in, in, in Hebrew scripture, it might have been the Lord Jehovah. Charles Fillmore says Jehovah is the same as the Christ or the I am. What does the I am, what does the light, what does the Christ of my being require of me? And the prophet Micah says to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. To do justice, to love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. How do we do justice? I think justice for me is about justice, true justice, in my way of understanding, has to be born of a consciousness of unity, a consciousness of oneness, that God is all that God is in everyone. Everyone is the Christ. They may not see it in the moment. They may not have been, a, they may not have been aware of it. That's our job. <laughs> to take to the light. To take them the light. Be the light for them. Remind them of who they truly are. Oneness. And in that consciousness, justice looks like Reminding, uplifting, reconciling, holding each other in the space of love and light. At least in my way of thinking. To love mercy is to be in that place of forgiveness, understanding, empathy, giving to each other, holding each other with the highest possible regard. Brene Brown talks about it as this idea of generosity. I want to see the highest and best in you. I want to call forth the highest and best in you. And I want to see you with love and care and compassion and empathy and forgiveness. And to walk humbly with God, to me really just means to be the vessel, to not be attached to it's me doing the work. As Jesus said, it's not I, but it's the light, it is the Christ, it is the Father, it is that doing the work through me. I do not speak, but the Christ speaks as me. I do not think, but the Christ thinks as me. I do not act, but the Christ acts as me. It's really about surrender. It's really about being the vessel, walking humbly, walking in the present moment, being present with the life that is living itself as you. And I think that's how we bring the light to the world that is represent, the systems that represent the world. And that is what I believe is our opportunity to speak love, to act in love, to hold everything and everyone in love, to uplift it 
Because there are many opportunities for us to be fearful and critical and judgmental of our systems. Believe me, (laughs) I know. Um, And I'm not saying to you that I have it all figured out or that I have ascended and I do this all the time. As I said to someone last week, when you hear me talking, I am having a conversation with myself. And I'm just letting you overhear me. Right? So how do we bring light to the systems? Again, I just go back to do justice, love mercy, walk humbly, and do it all with courage. Because I think it does take courage for us to be able to stand in what we believe to be as truth without projecting bad or wrong onto someone else, but truly seeing the world. And and I'm just I'm gonna say this because I think it's I maybe this is too judgmental. (laughs) But but I do I think that many of our systems are based in fear and continue to be, tended to grow from fear, continues to be propagated from fear. And so our opportunity is to bring love and awareness and the light to those systems, every opportunity we have, to show up, to speak the truth, to go to meetings that we can go to, to go to town hall meetings, to go to PTA meetings, to go to meetings where these things are being discussed, and to bring light and love. So, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. That's not a fluffy idea. It's not just some concept, it's the truth. And it really is a responsibility. I believe it's a responsibility to be the light of the world, to share what we have, as Jesus said, to share with those who don't, to bring the truth in any way we can to the people who are hurting, to be the light for those in the world who are hurting and in need and then to be present for the systems and to lift them up. Because that is the only way they're ever going to change and evolve and become something that is based in love. So be the light of the world. Believe it, know it. And I think it's our opportunity to be it in ways that maybe we haven't thought about before. So, and again, I want to go back to my original idea that I think sometimes in unity we resist some of those things that we think it is about our own journey, about awakening to our own light and unity focuses quite a bit on that. And that's important. Please don't hear me discount that. Because as we awaken to our own light, our own truth, then does that only then can we really bring it to other people. But it's not about just holding it in. It's not about us just having this beautiful, loving, light community. Um, and I'm going to... This is my mirror. David, it's not about... <laughs> um, it is about us taking that out into the world and speaking truth and being the truth in what we do and what we say. And so I believe that is something that we, as a community, me as an individual, and we as a community can grow into and, and really be more about that. And that's my hope for myself and for us.